good evening, everyone, and welcome to another episode of our L5R Legend of Five Rings Bone, Blade, and Blood. Or Blood, Bone, and Blade. Blade, Bone, and Blood. Whichever one of the three you want to say it in, the order will always be correct for you. It has been some time since we've seen our, our lovely faces that we're going to be seeing. So uh, uh, as a quick recap, we left off with the group... Uh, and we opened up with uh, Soshi Tetsuro waking up from a restful night of sleep for the first time in a long time. Uh, and we got to see a shadow creature entering his tent, a humanoid of shadow. Uh, they had a bit of a chat about having both arms back, which was a bit of a figment and a bit of a promise from the shadow element. Uh, but the shadow started to become more feminine in its body shape. Uh, as the shadow kind of, as the darkness started to overcome the tent, uh, and he was told that the Wakazashi in his possession and the shadows uh, that are coming to him are not in any way, shape, or form tied to the Shadowlands, although appearances would say differently. Uh, was asked for her name, but chose, but she chose to use the name Petal since there was a lot of flowery language being thrown around. Uh, so she added himself to the number of uh, agents that the shadow has uh, since it was greater than zero. Uh, and then we, uh, we got to mentioning that he should something happen to his mother, uh, that accidents tend to happen in this day and age. Uh, so he wouldn't feel too terrible about exchanging that kind of incident for the aid <clears throat> in furthering the shadow's agenda and then a messenger came in brought him breakfast and a note that the doji had left for him uh they met up with the rest of the group at the fisherman's shrine and was introduced to isawa kikio with the group who is now a new member of the delegation uh mentioned that isawa tensai has talked a lot about soshi uh, and was asked about the black ooze that was turning into obsidian, and we got to learn a little bit about how obsidian uh, is tied to the Shadowlands and how Jade can help fight the uh, the taint associated with it. Um, Aguro ended up giving his finger of Jade to Tamori Mori as the group made their way across the river. Uh, they did warn the peasant that was taking them to leave if the storm becomes too violent, uh, but they saw that the mooring posts had seen better days and had been fashioned in the cove uh, that they were taken to. Uh, so it shows that some of the villagers at least kind of spend time on the island. Uh, as they began their search, Soshi Tetsuro found the remnant of a walked path and a forgotten once used road um led into an overgrowth in a small valley where they saw that a grove was growing up and that there were ruins of a construction that was sitting subwater level it was more than reclaimed by nature at this point um uh, the structure they did come across did not appear rokugani in nature and it wasn't tiered like any of the castles that have been constructed or any of the buildings uh, but there were strange symbols that had been carved into the wooden timbers uh, that had been erected for walls. The doji remembered having seen something like this in a book that his wife was studying. But the memory was, I want to say, corrupted by her influence. Uh, and she was more important in the memory to him. And in the main room, they got to seeing a bunch of reliefs that were carved into the wall that showed the fall of the kami from a much more violent perspective. They saw that this wasn't some heavenly fall as was described by humanity. This was something that was seen as an attack of sorts. Um, great comets of fire and brimstone kind of coming to the, to the earth. Um, the Soshi did summon up a fire comic to kind of discuss the reliefs and the little fire spirit uh, gave them information as far as he was aware that the reliefs were not created by humans and that the depictions um, of the comic coming down were more like meteors uh, and they were more like 
um, the memories of an angry kind of hatred filled time um, but he also learned that this building was a home for many creatures um, and then when the Soshi asked about the obsidian creature he was told that those creatures were not present in the area they heard something or someone underneath them and as they tried to move around to position themselves uh, to prepare for an ambush uh, half of them ended up falling into a basement under under the building and more of a submerged kind of room where they saw an older gentleman who tried to urge them to not be there. Um, and when uh, tensions escalated, uh, he ended up dropping his human facade for that of his true form, which is that of a Naga. And we left off with the group kind of in a Mexican standoff sort of situation. The old man had slapped his tail against the water and they could hear the reverberations of somebody else coming up from underneath them to, uh, to join him. And I think this is a good place to pick up with our pair of faces. Hello, boys. Um, yeah. It is sad that we are missing our little dragon, uh, but they had life things to take care of. Uh, so hopefully there will be no combat without you, my friend. Uh, <clears throat> but we pick up with the two of you. There is a Naga and erupting out of a small pool. You see a second Naga come up. This one has feminine features, um, a little livelier, a little more energetic. There is a crude semblance of a katana that they are holding in, in one of its hands, uh, but it looks like it's made out of coral. Like it's curved like a katana but there are jagged edges here and there where the coral has kind of bloomed out from the shape um almost like if the memory of what it was supposed to be has long since left the shape um but the old man does kind of hold up its arms in a defensive manner the new female naga just kind of looks around, takes in the situation, and just brings the sword up defensively. Um, I I remember we're early in the timeline. Yes, you are. It, are the Naga even known to us right now? No, no. The to the to Aguro maybe, to the Phoenix maybe. Uh, there are treatises uh, and ledgers that have been written about the the civilization before but as far as like the actual nag are concerned no one has ever lived to tell the tale as it were so can i are, roll to see if i've ever read creatures. anything can i roll to see if i've ever read anything about these things yeah let's let's do the first roll of the year um what do you want me to roll you have history yes i do there you go my man um yes yeah, so it would be a lore uh oh i don't have history i have theology and heraldry oh oh we could we could go with theology we could do a, a lore theology i think we can you approve theology is rhyme of viking i will day 21 21 The crane. What'd you roll? Oh, I didn't add my uh, my uh, keep uh, roll one keep one for my uh, eclectic knowledge. Oh, I'll add a die too. So if, yeah, just add it. Okay, so uh, a three compared to what you rolled. I did not do well. Better off. <laughs> you didn't do well. I don't know. <laughs> you know me in world 20 this we'll find archaic out. number formula yeah no yeah you're oh never mind off. i got a 24 i did really well yeah you did i forgot right. to scroll down yeah you did not do terrible you did you did just fine for yourself <laughs> uh yeah so 
you've read stuff on the Naga. Especially given who your wife is, like you've you've probably had to pour over some collection of stories. Um Especially when I stayed, especially when I stayed for winter court. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you've never seen one. And the, all the depictions of the Naga in, in the kind of history books and in the collected tales or anthologies always show them to be these monstrous creatures, these towering, um, snake like monstrosities. And here, <clears throat> face to face with two of them. The older male visaged one is about your size. Like, he's small, he is thinner, he is. You still have like humanoid upper body, uh, but the lower half of him is this massive serpent tail. Uh, and sure if push comes to shove he could tower over you but there's no frill on the top of his head the ears are kind of these little frill protrusions that come out there's no nose it's kind of like voldemort um it's very much like imagine um the lizard from the um the amazing Spider-Man, Spider -Man? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, like that. Um, like just kind of like flat faced, kind of curled, no real lip. Um, there's frills that run down the back that start at the base of the neck. Um, the hands are webbed and clawed. They are they are menacing looking, but they're not huge. They're not these barbaric things that you've seen before. The woman looks to be much more uh, in line with Tamori Mori. Like, she's bigger, she's thicker, she's got pronounced muscles. Um, but she also, she also has this tired look to her face that really reminds you of your wife more than anything. Um, and both of them have this aura of exhaustion about them. Um, what I've read about them, they're they could be reasoned with. All all the tales mention that anyone that has ever encountered them has always run away before anything has ever escalated or de-escalated to that position. But from what you're seeing right now both of them aren't attacking you they're they're more like trying to see what the situation is going to bring for them okay so using etiquette i'm yeah i because it's the only thing i can think of um i i hold my hands out mm. like away from my away from my blade um and i give a shallow bow and we are not here to cause any trouble. Well, um, using uh, diplomacy to try to um, cast a spell on our potential uh, threat, yep. I kind of calmly dust off my kimono with my one hand and readjust my hat because I had fallen into the rubble previously. Mm -hmm. and, you uh, did. Had to slowly crawl out because nobody was there to help me. And I am now seeing the now seeing the crane having parlay with these creatures while I am forced to dig myself out of a hole mm -hmm. with one arm. I, uh, I I'm, I'm I'm not happy about it, but I, I kind of keep my mouth shut and just watch i've got my sleeve rolled up just enough where the kanji um tattoos are visible in case i need to uh to get strange but for now if they eat him 
then that gives me time to run. If Perfect. they talk, that gives me time to get to know them better. So you hear them talking to each other in slithering kind of consonants and uh, rolling R's of uh, blending into different vowel sounds. Um, and after a moment, you see the the one that you saw before the gentleman point up at the crane and the gesture and the female nods and doesn't bring the blade down all the way but does kind of put it at an at an angle now that is no longer defensive or offensive but it is still at the ready The jaw unhinges and you hear a clicking noise as it rehinges. Ugh. And it, it reverberates in the room and you hear she looks up. And it is a very broken Rokugani that comes out of her mouth. But she looks up, she re gives you the same kind of shallow bow. You should not be here. This is dangerous territory. We know. We're seeking spider demons. The shape they can take shifters. the shapes. Yes. They've become um a problem. <clears throat> we have dealt with them. They we, are dangerous. I nod in agreement. We have faced them <clears throat> several times. Um, actually, I assisted in the slaying of what I assumed was a queen of one of their broods. Um, we're tracking several and we thought they were in this direction, um, which is why we came here. We have kept them from here, but they have begun to dig, I think is word you use, under lake, under river, under the source of life outside of here. If um, I may ask, when you say you dealt with them, were you referring to uh, trade or a finality in the dealings? There is no trade with them. There is only violence. Excellent. It's always good to know where one stands. Is there any way you can show us where they're digging? We might be able to um, <clears throat> take care of them for you, seeing that that's why we came. She turns, and you can hear the jaw unhinge again and rehinge uh, with a softer clicking noise. And she talks to the gentleman in their snake tongue, uh, and he just kind of nods and starts to melt back into his human form, his human visage. Um, and you can feel a kind of breeze coming through the ruins as they're not really using the kami the same way that you do, but they are. There is a kind of balance between them and the kami that makes it real strange to you since you thought that only the Rokugani were the ones that had bound the Kami to the system of what the Shugendra call magic. <clears throat> I've got some familiarity, though, with air being used as an illusory uh, magic, so uh, this is fascinating. Yeah. I, but from what we learned of the Kami last time, uh, not terribly surprising. 
and she slithers up past uh, all of you. And as she does, you can hear the jaw unhinge and there is that hard clicking noise as it kind of comes back into whatever position it needs to be in to speak Rokugani. There's no wince of pain from her when it does that. It, it almost feels like it is a, a natural thing for them. Um, and she starts to lead you through the kind of overgrowth that has taken the this part of the island. Um, and even though the rain is coming down hard at this point, she is not slowed by it or the debris or any of the foliage. Um, and you're not sure if it's the fact that she has no legs to worry about, that she doesn't have to worry about balance with every step, or if the trees and the earth itself is just kind of like pushing its way out of her, uh, out of her kind of trajectory. But she, she easily leads you to a northern part of the island. Um, and she points across the river to what is a forest. Um, and you hear her. They were last digging from that direction. We have stopped them there. And she points straight across to uh, the south part of the city. And there, she points to another part further south. Uh, it seems that they are moving further and further up to where the source of the water is. I, I shall bow again. I thank you for your assistance. I don't bow because these are creatures, not uh, people of social standing. So I uh, do find it interesting that the um, uh, doji, the fact that they're they're digging near the mouth of the river, does that strike you as being potentially bad, considering that if they do something, it will flow from there towards the rest of the area? I think they're planning to flood the city. Or poison it. Or poison it. Ugh, either way. We must, do, we must move with haste. And how do you propose to stop a river? Uh, maybe we stop them from finishing their digging. Ah. The two of us against a nest of spider demons. I love our chances. Well, uh, more, more, more like me against a nest of spider demons. I fully expect you to disappear if things get really ugly, which is fine because then you'll be able to tell the rest of the people where we are. Doji, are you questioning my commitment and honor? No, I'm, I'm complimenting your wisdom because if both of us die here, no one knows. What an artful compliment. Well played. Well, in that case, by all means. I'm do you have a way? Do you have a way? Do you have a way to use the Kami to send a message? Yes, I was already planning on doing so. Excellent. Uh, do so now before we start getting into the thick of things. I was going to wait till a dramatically appropriate time, but I suppose now works just as well. I just don't want to um, <clears throat> step into a step into a situation where suddenly we can't. Aguro and the rest of the magistrates. Um, yeah, remember, you and I are not the only two here. Yeah, they. Well, they one of them could have helped me get out of that pit, and they didn't. So, as far as I'm concerned, they're not real. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. Uh, but Aguro and the other magistrates kind of finally catch up to the two of you. Uh, you see that he's out of breath. Uh, he's got his hand up trying to block the rain. Um, the Isawa has called on a small Kami to kind of keep her in this little bubble of non-rain. Um, 
but everybody else is soaked through. And he calls out to you as like a thunder crack lights up the sky for a moment. Like, what are we, what are we going to do? We are going to stop them from doing what the hell they're doing, which is either poisoning the wells of the town or causing it to flood. Also, I want to personally thank you for joining us. Um, it pleases me to know that two people with four completely formed limbs were able to eventually catch up to a creature with no legs and someone with only three working limbs. He, I look I, I look over at you. He's completely with a little over. bit of a raised eyebrow. And I'm like You see a featureless mask with a wide brimmed hat over it. <laughs> Let's get going before uh the storm gets anywhere. Oh well actually no, not yet. Do what you need to do, and then let's get going before the storm gets any worse. I will prepare the legacy of Kaze no Kami. Oh. Yeah. I will, uh, as he does that, I hold my hands 19, up and I do a small prayer. Which is a success with a raise, so that will be a distance of 11 miles. Nice. Okay. I'm sorry, school rank times 10 miles plus another 10 miles. So that's 20 miles. quite the distance. No, you're, you're ranked two, aren't you? I am. Oh, so that's 30 miles. Actually, no, I'm uh, rank. I'm rank three in air. No, no, but you're like, your actual school rank is two. Oh, yeah. I school rank is too. Yeah, so, yeah, 10 miles. So, I will, uh, I will send the message back to the Scorpion representative mm -hmm. um, that the spider demons have been found they are attempting to damage the river. Potential loss of life very high. The doji and our attendants are doing what we can to stop it. I will make a the full report in off. person later. Bird flies off before that last sentence happens. I debate sending another bird just so my message can get through unabated, but I don't. Okay. Um, Important parts were all there. Yeah, That's but you you see a bird come into existence out of nowhere, Doji, in his arms. He says what he says whispers. to it, whispers <laughs> something into it, and the bird flies off as you see him kind of like still trying to say something to it. Um, I look at you and I do a shrug and I go, the commies are fickle. Yes, they are no more reliable than men sometimes. Agreed. Uh, I look well, at the, uh, I, I, I look at everybody and I'm like, does anybody want to say any prayers before we go in? <clears throat> this is your chance. No, nobody. Everybody, the, the Isawa does kind of raise her hand and she's just like, what, what exactly is the plan moving forward? Like, what are we going to do? We don't know yet. When we get there, we see it. We will formulate a plan and execute it. I but, only... we're, but we're not, we're, we're not going to turn around and head home and let them do what they're doing. And I only nods. offer prayer in the event <laughs> that I think that I'm going to fail. So I... Don't feel the need to bother the gods presently. Okay. Right. I turn around and start walking. Yeah. <laughs> and a girl kind of saddles up next to you. Hey, did, uh, did you understand what he said by that? Like, what does, what does that mean? Like, are we, are we going to fail? 
No, no, no. He says that he's not going to fail, which is why he doesn't need to say a prayer. Why doesn't he just say that like that then? Because he's a scorpion. Oh, they confuse me. They confuse most of us. It's in their nature. I don't like it. I'm sorry that we happen to take a method of speech that is a little bit more artistic than the other clans. Perhaps if you were more a literary mind, you might uh, glean more of an appreciation of it. Only thing I need to read is the liquor label. <laughs> Point proven. But you all make it back to the boat with the, with the peasant. Mm -hmm. uh, he bows low as all of you arrive. Back across, my lords. Uh, not quite. And I point to him in the direction that the Naga pointed to us. We're going there. Oh. It would be easier to go by land then, sir. Agreed. Okay. I look at everybody. I go. And turn on. And I start walking. And well, he's got to take you across the river. <laughs> Oh, I, oh! So the places across the river they has yep. to take us to. Yeah, got it. I thought it was along the no, same no, no. side. No, no problem. Yeah. Oh. So yeah, take us as close as you can to that area. And he shoots straight across. Um, and when you get back to the village, you see that even though it's raining, a lot of the people are. Uh, you can hear like celebratory music. You can see that uh, fireworks are being tested. Um, because tomorrow is the first day of the Kampuku ceremony. Tomorrow they will begin with an archery contest for the day, the morning festival, uh, the morning challenge, which has a maximum of 30 points allotment. And then the afternoon um, contest will be a contest of poetry, which has a maximum of five points allotted to it. <clears throat> You guys gonna hoof it, or are you guys gonna look for horses and try to? Uh, How far the... is it? Marching, it's maybe an hour and a half, almost two hours. It might take us that long just to find freaking horses. There are a lot of you. Yeah, so we're just gonna walk. Okay. We'll waste too much time looking for horses for all of us. Yeah, we're going to waste too much time. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. uh, you start hoofing it. And you... The rain does start to let up. It starts to come down softer, more sporadically. Um, but as you come up on the small kind of waterfall collection of waterfalls that come down into the lower valley that you're in right now from the upper uh, mountainous area that leads to the spine of the world. You can see what looks to be small collections of houses that dot the landscape. Um, looks like people over here use the water to kind of fish or to uh, filter out whatever they're they're mining you don't know if this is a a group that's associated with the village or if it's just another set of peasants but as you approach like they avert their eyes um they bow low most of them drop to their knees when they see you i just Literally pay them, pay them no heed and keep walking. <clears throat> I, in a fit of curiosity, hmm. kind of give them a look over. Um, I don't know if we were expecting to find people here. So if this is a potential caper or plot, my paranoia is insisting that I look for it. So, uh, no, you're, you're about, right. You're right. Anything about uh -huh. these peasants that seems out of uh, sorts? 
Um, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, let's have you investigation. Yeah, let's do investigation. You could tell I haven't been played this for a while because I'm not as paranoid uh, as I should be. Would my search um, emphasis work? Yeah. The 22. 22. Not a bad roll. You come across this village and there's no there's no clear definitive symbols of the empire at all. There doesn't seem to be any any gold that has been exchanging hands up here. Everyone looks very simple. Uh, the clothes they are wearing looks to have been kind of crafted from furs and hides. Very simple folk. But you also notice that there's no defensive constructions. There's no fence. There's no it. The collection of I want to say pawns that they have set up for the rice <clears throat> don't have anything like a scarecrow or anything. So it looks like these people are simple. Like not even part of the empire at all. And the only thing that lets you know that they're Rokugani is like their features. Doji, I believe that we've stumbled into heaven. Place of endless safety. Note the lack of fortifications, the lack of any form of concern. It's almost as if they were under the bosom of the Emperor himself. I stop. I, I, I don't know what you want me to roll to keep mm. my, my mask. Mm. Um, I but I kind of real. They're quite comfortable. But I kind of realize what he's saying. And, but I'm going to cover it with, of course, they're under the protection of the Emperor. They are a bit mere. Ex, you know, an hour away from protection from the Emperor. Of course they're safe. Far from the Crablands as we are. And I'm totally faking this. Because I realize the, um, that we probably the walked the into the middle of a freaking nest. Yeah, what's the name oh. of the Emperor at this point? Um, I believe this is one of the last Taturis. Um, I'll check the history book. I kind Tomorrow. of look because I I have oh. um, but I think it's either it's either one of the last Saturis or one of the first Hantes. So what would you like me to roll to keep my face just? Oh, that's going to be deception or sincerity. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's cool. Be... And I I and I am <clears throat> trained in sincerity. No, no, that's going to be a straight uh, acting role. That's cute. Acting. Yeah. A sixteen, not bad. Okay. Well, you were somebody trained. totally not trained. Oh, you, darn it! Untrained. You gotta roll untrained. Twenty-one. What? Wow. I'm a crane, of course. Come on now. Jesus. Um. All right, well, now. Let's see if anybody Where picks up I realize that we have probably walked into a nest, mm -hmm. and I'm like. Of course, they feel safe here. They're but mere, 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 um, mere, an hour away from protection. Their daimo clearly makes them feel safe. Well, I'm used to being a hero of the common people, so <laughs> I expect. Uh, I'm not. I'm not kidding. I have the merit. I am a he hero is. of the people. He does. He does. Oh, okay, um, fair enough. <laughs> he is. So I offer a kind of respectful <clears throat> inclination of my hat. Um, please, there's no need to scrape so low. We are all nestled in the bosom of Emperor Tetsuro. 
Are we not? And you see them all kind of look to each other and they just kind of just nod in agreement to whatever you're saying. Oh. They don't know the name of the Emperor. Correct. Huh. Smart. Well played. I, I'm a scorpion. <laughs> well played. Um. Who? Okay, so. So as I'm talking to the scorpion, my hands like go to just rest on. My the the uh, the the handle of my blade. Hmm. It's like I I I'm ready to draw by making it look casual. Yeah. You happen to know a faster way um, to the south. We've been traveling for many miles and we are tired, but duty compels us to not stop. This is a great, a great favor I'm asking of all of you. Would you be able By the to way, assist us? And I'm looking at the rest of the party. Did they realize that these people don't know the emperor's name? Yeah. Yeah, like okay. they, they're they're all kind of like whispering to each other. They're like, did he, did he just like proclaim himself emperor? Or are we? Is it something? Uh, I'm gonna look at uh, at Hida Agura. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm gonna give him the look I give him when things are about to go south. We've been around together long enough that you <clears> should <throat> know that look. Yeah, and you see that he kind of like he nods, and then he goes back to talking to Tamori Mori. Okay. Um, but you notice that there's a moment where they come over to one of them comes over to you and says, like, of course, samurai, please, uh, please. You are heading south, but you you've come from the south. Sorry, my sense of direction is not I, I am no man of the land. This is one area in which your knowledge far outstrips that of the samurai. I'm watching their feet. If any of them make any like, like move into a stance or about to strike, I'm just gonna draw, you know, and take that Whereas one down. I am getting a sense of the social situation, and if I exactly feel a threat coming on, I'm going to back up. <laughs> All right. If I I assume I assume that I will be moving forward and you'll be moving back. <laughs> so far, my instincts of paranoia have served me well. Uh, yes, they have. If both of you could give me a flat earth roll. Earth. I think 16. that's a place where I'm not a Viking. 16. That's not bad. For only not, two dice? Not bad. 19. Nine? And 19. Nice! Damn. There's a moment where the one that came up to you starts to motion back in the direction that you came from. And as both of you turn to look, you see the rest of your group kind of standing there in the positions that they were just a moment ago. But you notice that the flesh on their body just starts to melt away and just leave the skeleton behind. What the, the fuck? The area around you becomes dilapidated and tainted. There's pus-filled postules that are starting to fill up with gas from underneath you. The land itself looks barren and decrepit. And you hear the screams of people that have been muffled by age and distorted by time. And... <clears throat> The peasant that was near you is not there. None of the peasants that uh, that were around you as you walked in are there at all. Uh, only the skeletons of your compatriots now kind of sit there. And all of them you see turn their attention on the two of you. And they start to lumber forward. If you could roll initiative for me. Shit. We can get into some combat. One's initiative. Um, it should be a button for it. 
under information, I think, if I remember correctly. Yeah, it's in information. Mm-hmm. Uh, unmodified, I'm assuming. Yeah, unmodified initiative. There's no modifications. Oh, I don't get my bonus? You have a bonus? Uh, plus two my jutsu rank. Man. I'm crane, bro. That's some, that's some bullshit. Oh, I have to select the <laughs> first. 28. Okay. Hold on, I gotta figure out how to do this. Twelve. Nice. Not anywhere near twenty-eight. Nope. And let's see what they got. Like I said, I am not a Viking in this respect. Not really, but this uh, is this, this is where the other people get to play. I did my part. <laughs> Okay, so uh, Doji, you have a twenty-eight, so you get to go first. How would you okay, like to so hand? there are four skeletons that look like they're making their way lumbering towards the two of you. Um, one of them towers over the other ones, which is Aguro's. Okay, uh, so I've been I've been affected by illusion magic already in the past at mm-hmm. least once already. Mm-hmm. Can I use a void or something to try to shake this off? You can use a void point to try to roll your earth again. Yeah. Um, but this doesn't feel like illusion magic. There's no swirl of wind around you. To kind of to, to have your kami kind of warn you about it. This feels it ne- just that more nefarious. This makes so non-logical sense mm-hmm. that this just happened that um I don't know. I think I would try to like meditate my way out of this because this doesn't feel right. Something it this feels off a change this quick. Mm. It feels um, like we're on the deck enjoying a nice refreshing uh, mahoto. There's, yeah, there's, something. there's a little moho- mahoto coming your way. Yes, that's what I mean. It just does it. Hey, wait a minute. Oh yeah, I don't have that. Um, you can meditate. no, I do have I do have spellcraft. You do have spellcraft. So I do know li- yes. Yeah, so I do know a little bit about magic. Um, that's why I'm thinking that I would be like, this is wrong. Um, if you want to take a round to investigate the the surroundings and the the event itself, that would be a a spellcraft roll. You could try a meditation roll to kind of center yourself. Push oh, meditation yourself out of it. As well, meditation for sure. Meditation. Okay. And you are trained in that, so do hit the training button. Thirteen. Damn it. Mm. What if I use a void? Can I re-roll that? Use a void out. Oh, it. You can roll one, keep one, and add it to that. So. Uh, you want to use it? I rolled. Yes. Okay. I rolled a two. So Ugh, it's okay. total of 15. Yep. Not good enough. Okay. Okay. So. The, <clears throat> the Soshi will see uh, the Doji kind of take a moment, take a stance that you've seen very, very many crane take uh, almost when they're dueling. But there's no... There's no move to draw a sword. There's only the kind of rhythmic breathing of a warrior trying to center himself, trying not to make a mistake, trying not to uh, react <clears throat> primarily to something. And as he does that, you see the skeletons lunge forward at the two of you. Uh, the big one comes down with his kind of pointed fingers uh, on the doji along with uh, two others. One of them comes lunging forward at you with its uh, with its clawed fingertips. What is your end to be hit? T5. 25. 25 for you. 
And for Soshi, uh, let me just come back over here for a second. It's 20. Oh, you can go back to your spells. So the one that attacks Soshi, 776 is 20 exactly. So the Soshi will take 11 points of damage. Fuck. Is that bad? That's pretty harsh. <laughs> is that bad, he says. That that's pretty bad, sir. You're you're it's you're way past nicked. healthy and you're nicked. Yep. Plus three penalty to all your TNs. Yeah, so your healthy level has a maximum of ten hit points. So Okay. Uh your nicked level uh is anywhere from ten to fourteen, so you're nicked right now, so you have a plus three to any TN uh to anything that you're doing. Okay. Uh so the ones that attack the doji, first little guy doesn't do anything. Uh, oh, the second little guy, though. Yeah, 35. Wow. Will hit, and then the aguro skeleton. I don't have to worry. That's not the dragon. They never roll that high. Yeah, it's it's garbage. This this <laughs> is this is definitely like Ray influencing my roll from afar. Yay! Uh, yeah. Thank you, Ray. <laughs> Six keep three, and I rolled a total of fourteen. Uh, but the the one that did hit you, four keep two for damage. Wow! Um, means you're gonna take twelve. Damn it. Okay. But you do kind of <clears throat> stand there, you center yourself. Um, you can feel the gust of wind as the first attack flies past you. You can feel like the tug of it clawing into your uh, silk kimono, but nothing really catches through. Uh, you feel a second one. The same thing from a different angle. You feel that snag against the silk of the kimono, but then you do feel that it digs in as it finds flesh to kind of grab into. Um, <clears throat> and you feel the drag kind of pull. And you look down as your eyes open to see the three kind of slash marks from its uh, pointer middle and ring finger that just kind of dug into your belly um and because your eyes are open you do manage to kind of pull yourself out of the haymaker coming your way from the large aguro sized skeleton um but that brings us to soshi's turn how do you want to handle you these, could stop uh... doing your best impression of a bamboo pole i could use your help <laughs> <laughs> so mean. and uh I'm going to screw it. I'm going to throw a uh, Tempest of Air at all of them. And, Tempest uh, of Air. Yes. Cone, 75 feet long, 15 feet at its end. It is level one, so you could cast it in this one round. Yep. Um, all right. So, uh, if you wanted to make any raises before you roll, uh, you could change the width. You could add to the width. You could add to the length, or you could add to the damage you're rolling, or to add to the air EN to avoid the knockdown. That's I'm cool. going to be going to add to the air TN to <laughs> ignore the knockdown. <laughs> Okay, do you get a free raise? I do because it's air. Okay, so you're you're not gonna add anything any more raises to it? Um well it's not like it's gonna blow them seventy five feet away from me, which no. would be optimal. Um it's just gonna knock them all down. Mm -hmm. So I mean hopefully it's gonna knock them all down. Um so there's really no other need to make 
You know what? I'll do one raise to to have the TN be um, my air versus their earth with an additional ten difficulty on their part. So oh, I'll declare so... I'll declare for one raise. Okay, so you're, getting, you're using your one free raise to raise the uh, the TN to resist being knocked down by one, uh, and then you're using an actual raise to to raise it one more time. Yes. Perfect. So you're so looking. It's actually, it says f plus five per raise. Yeah. Yeah. So it's so... going to be plus ten to their TN to resist being knocked down. Yep, and it's my air versus their earth. So. Yep. All right. Let's uh, so roll let's to see cast. If I can cast it with one raise. And I'm at plus three to my TN for this. And you have plus three, your TN, because of your damage. Um, so whatever it would have been. Oh, oh. that's, I hit yeah. one raise, minus yeah. three. Yeah, because you, so... you're normally supposed to hit a TN of 10. The plus three makes it 13. The plus five makes it 18, and you got a 20. Uh, Let's roll my air range. And so you summon a gust of air emanating from your position that crashes into all in its path, knocking them to the ground. All targets so within the area. A, they have to beat a 46. 46. Yeah. Uh, uh, all targets within the area have effects of one keep one wounds and must make a contested roll using the earth against your air. Uh, yeah, so roll... Oh, there's no roll for damage, huh? Oh, yeah, there yeah, is. There's damage. Yeah. Two. This was this was not about the damage. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, well, no, you rolled ten, didn't you? Reduce damage ten of oh, nine. You rolled a nine. Um, okay. So let's see what their earth does for them. Uh, the little guy rolled an 11. They're shooting, they're shooting for a 46. Yep. So 11 doesn't do it. 10 doesn't do it. Ooh. This guy rolled a one and a two. So that's a three. So that's not going to do it. And then the Tetsuro one, even with an extra die, only rolled an 11. So they all are knocked down. They all take nine points of damage. This is why when I was commenting to uh, uh, Kamori that if we did have a duel, it would be to the first one to fall. Mm -hmm. <laughs> smart. That's smart. Um, and then I back up so that when they get up, I am out of easy uh, attack range. <clears throat> The, the doji sees this just blast of air shoot out in this cone. Postules explode outward as this massive kind of burst of wind shoots forward. Um, <clears throat> and all four skeletons come crashing to the ground. Uh, they're pushed back slightly. I'm going to say that because of your TN being so high that they do get kind of pushed back. Uh, and you immediately hear a guru. What? What? What are you doing? And as he starts to get up, the illusion of what happened vanishes. It starts to melt away. The buildings look dilapidated. That stays. The earth does look like it's been sapped of all its livelihood <clears throat> there is a central area where it looks like there is a small cluster of obsidian that has been kind of pulled up out of the crust of the earth itself um and it kind of looks like it's in the shape of what looks to be this rough very crystalline kneeling body kind of arm one arm raised up supplicating so this tells you that there must have been some kind of sacrifice used 
What are I looked the down at I, that, that blast of air was so strong it knocked it over, <laughs> potentially broke it. Well, it, it it's not in the area of effect that you would have used. Oh, okay. It's in the right. center of it's in the center of what this little village cluster was. I looked down at where I was cut. You're still cut. You're still hurt. Something hurt does you. It, does it look like three claws or one blade? No, it looks like three claws. It looks like the three I look claws. I look I look at the I look at Higuro and, and I point at the wound. He's confused by what you're trying to say. There was an illusion of you as skeletons, and apparently it hurt me. Uh, I am going to... Uh... That's strange, because it, to us, it seemed like the two of you just became catatonic. Okay. I drink some uh, sake and call upon the... Uh... The water, Kami. Ooh. Um, because of the taint here, uh, and I haven't looked at your roll, I'm going to say that it's going to add not only the, t the three from your damage, but also another ten to your TN to summon a water, Kami. So you're going to need at well, I wasn't least... actually summoning one. I was casting a spell. Um, oh, I'm casting um, uh, re uh, path to inner peace. Okay, which heals a number of wounds um, equal to the the amount by which I exceeded the TN to cast it. So okay, that so you would normally be a 19 of, yeah. yeah, you normally would normally heal eight, eight. Well, you normally would have healed five, uh, because you do have a plus three to all your TNs. From your wound. Well, that's yeah, because it's the casting roll is a ten, so yeah. plus three to the TM would make it a thirteen, yeah. and I exceeded that by five with my roll. Yeah, uh, so that'd be five. So you're gonna heal theoretically. You're gonna heal two. Oh, yeah. the The kami here are not willing to help as much as possible. So you're gonna get the basest, the the most minimalist of effects from anything that you do here. Well, that still, I think, now moves me to healthy. <laughs> I took 11, so... Just barely, yeah. Do yeah. I feel my Kami around me, or is he gone? It is not there with you. Oh, that feels weird. Yeah. It is not there at all. How, how banged up is Doji? Um, I took 11. Yeah, he's just as bad as you were. Is he nicked or I don't know yeah. how healthy he? Yeah, he's he nicked. no, no. I, I, I'm nicked. Yeah, I'm nicked. Um. Okay. Wow. So there are no people here, though. No, none. And as you point to the wound, you see Tamori kind of come over and hold a piece of jade up to it, like uh, a little yeah. kid who thinks that this will suck up whatever evil is in the wound. Uh, I, I let him. I'm like, yeah. But you see a guru kind of lean down. It's like that. That's not. That's not what that works. That's not how that works. That's dude, whatever you know about this. Is, this isn't. That's not. No. No. Come here. Come here. Come here. <laughs> um. And he pulls them did away. We, did we take any taint from this experience? No. That's that's another thing that you do notice is that the the jade doesn't glow like it's in the presence of jade. Like when, when they approached you and they got closer to the obsidian, it glowed a little bit, but it didn't glow near your wound or your wounds. It glowed because of the approximation, the, the proximity to um, this obsidian sacrifice. And if we I'm gonna... move towards the obsidian, does it glow again? Yes. How okay. much do we want to deal with this? Um, we want to find out what they're doing here first, but this might be part of it. That is an excellent conclusion I had not considered. Your sagacity knows no bounds, Doji. Uh, being well-read, as you said. 
quite. Um, when I look at this altar, of all the stuff I read when I visited my crab friends, mm. does anything come to mind? The the altar is not really like this pedestal that you're used to from like different uh, rituals that Shugenja would do. Um, it's kind of just this mound of dirt that has been raised up to resemble a bowl. Yeah. And you can see that there are ashes in it like something was burnt. Um, there's a remnant of what looks to be a feather. Uh, just the barest kind of bottom edge of the feather that would normally be used as like a writing quill. Yeah. Uh, it looks like that didn't melt in the fire. Um, few kind of strands of silk uh, that look like they were thrown into the fire and kind of the spaghetti of them kind of coming out of the bowl on the side of its rim. They weren't close enough to be burnt. Um, and there's a small, what looks like shards of bone that look like they might have been mortared or attempted to be mortared and they were just kind of like hurriedly thrown into the bowl. Um, and what looks like just the charred bottom bowl kind of like uh, concave remnant of what must be oil or blood. Wonderful. Um, I step away from it, make mm -hmm. sure I don't touch it. Um, I, I'm, I, I approach so, it. Yeah. I, I actually look at you and I'm like, what do you make of this? Um, Lick as he's looking at it, as he's looking at it, I'm going to start looking for tracks. Okay. So I want to find out if, how recently this was done. Um, if oh. I'm seeing any residual heat from the ashes if the blood is congealed if there's you know basically doing a quick look over of what's going on and attempt to suss out whether this was done recently as a trap for us mm. or if this was done a long time ago and we just stumbled across it okay uh, i think both of you guys will have to roll an investigation then but it's... that's where i'm a viking that's where you're a viking that is definitely where I'm a Viking. 18. 18. I only got a 12. And you rolled with your emphasis, too. Yep. Wow. Yeah, that's terrible. Um, but you're not looking for anything. Once. Yeah, you're not looking for anything that's hard to decipher. Um. So your, your TN wasn't too high. The TN for tracks was higher. Uh, but Doji nailed it. Um, as you see the Doji start to look around, use the scabbard of his sword to kind of move things around, trying to kneel down and, and just survey the, the surroundings. You've seen him do this before. He is hunter mode. Like, he is looking for something. And as you see that, <clears throat> you start to perk up your eyes, your ears, you start to kind of take in the surroundings, the scent of the burnt blood, the look of the obsidian. Uh, you start to kind of guesstimate how long it would take to fully encase a body in obsidian, given um, that that was the goal of the ritual you're imagining. This must have been done within the last couple of days. Like, this is no more than three days old. So Doji is now in bloodhound mode. So he's yeah. off following, looking at tracks, right? Yeah. And the others are kind of with him, right? Uh, Tamori Mori and Aguro are both kind of standing a little bit more than arm's length from the obsidian statue. Uh, he has his Tetsubo out and he's just kind of like asking them 
if it would be a good idea to just smash the thing. Uh, they're arguing about whether that would create too many pieces, and, and he's trying to reassure them that he is pretty skilled when it comes to smashing things, and that he can Both make... of you? We were set upon by creatures previous to this, and Doji is currently um, leaving by himself to investigate tracks. If he's Leaving attacked, by myself, I was looking for tracks. I, I'm aware of that. I'm he's telling them it. that you're he's leaving by it. yourself. <laughs> yeah, he's spinning it. Uh, got it. Yeah, I'm and, getting them to go not here, is yeah. basically the... It would behoove both of you with your experience in combat to keep an eye out for other threats. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I gotta protect my, my, my friend. Yes. Uh, you, and he yells out at the Isawa, and you see that she just kind of startles. Uh, you know magic, you stay here and you help him. You protect her, and he points at the Okoto. And then he stomps and over I, to where Doji is and just kind of picks him up. Alright, where are we going? What have you found? I, I turn to her, and I kind of lower my voice a little bit. Um, and I will be rolling a, a skill for this. Um, oh. oh. The... Doji is familiar with the kami, but these things that attacked us were beyond his skill. It took me to be able to free us from them. I fear that if he's left to his own devices, he may be in more peril. I'm not quite done with my investigation here, so I would consider it wise if you were to accompany him. His estimation of his own skills sometimes outweighs their practical use. Right. That's and gonna be a I would like to roll. roll uh, do you want me to roll sincerity or deception? No, I would deception. also like to point out that I'm the only one who didn't attack my friends. It's true. Uh, no, I also <laughs> didn't. I also didn't attack my friends. Yeah, yeah. That would require <laughs> okay, him that friends. is true as well. <laughs> yeah, that would require him having friends. Uh, yes, yeah, that's gonna be a deceit roll. Deceit. That would be a. Sincerity Low with your emphasis. No, no, that's you nope. have a you have an emphasis in, in the seat. For sincerity. I'm trying to find it on my sheet. Yeah. Uh, oh, it's sincerity. Yeah. Oh, okay. Then yes, I have to seek as a specialty. As an emphasis, yeah. Thirty-seven. <laughs> okay. You know, I thought, hey, I rolled a ten. This is going to be a good roll for me, uh, and I was like. 25 seems like a good roll to try and spot a lie being told blatantly to her face. But 37, that's a, that's a real lie right there. Yep, yep. It's, it's not a lie. It is a sound piece of advice. And she looks at him. She looks at you and at the, the sleeve that's kind of pinned up where your arm would be. And she kind of leans in. Are you, are you sure? You don't want me to, to stick around and help with the obsidian. To be blunt with you, we Scorpion, in the grand scheme of things, to the rest of the Empire, are, if not expendable, then at least are not as valuable to one such as, as one such as Doji would be. He's also the one that's been put in lead of this particular operation. I would never consider myself to be expendable. However, I feel that our assets should be placed in protection of him. I will be... I will be fine. I was able to dispel the creatures that attacked us earlier. I'm reasonably certain I'll be able to see through this. I know that in your heart, you know that the, what I'm saying is true, that duty is the most important thing. Is that not so? Cannot argue with you. Come along, Kurosan. I offer a bow, a deep bow. They both bow to you, uh, and all, everyone except you, are left at the site of the obsidian kind of sacrifice and the bowl. And as Doji and the gang kind of are being taken, 
because uh, you are being carried by a guru at this point uh, to the northernmost part of the village. There's a moment where the shadow of this obsidian taint symbol uh, stirs and you see that feminine body come up out of the shadow and it pulls the pinky off of the body and just kind of pockets it into itself. I was wondering if you would put in an appearance in this particular instance. I have come but for a trinket. Looking at the person offering it, I'd say you can take another nine. Well, if you are being generous and you see all one by one, all of the fingers start to just get pulled into itself. Now, if you'll permit me a moment, I have something fairly reckless to do in an effort to um, glean some more information. Of course. And I am going to use, now that I don't have the health-related penalties, Reflections of Panku on the statue. Um, it tells uh, all powers and abilities the object possesses. It identifies the um, knowledge of the item's origin in very broad strokes, such as where it was forged, the clan of the individual who has carried it the longest, or something similar at the GM's discretion. The GM's discretion I'm hoping for is the link between what we're dealing with and this, and who put it here. Uh, um, for, you may tell for safety reasons, you notice that once the last finger has been plucked by this shadow creature, it slinks into your shadow. I believe that's where it was before for a time, so... Um, I also, looking back, because I, I rolled well enough to keep them occupied for a while, um, I unpin the sleeve, and the other arm comes out, mm -hmm. um, and then I will enact the spell, um, okay. rationalizing that I have a 50-50 bet of either this shadow thing making, doing this more dangerous, or... The other 50%, it insulating me from something potentially worse than it. <laughs> sure. Those are good odds. Yep. All right. Uh, you will have to at least cover whatever the standard difficulty of the spell is, plus a forced raise because of the lack of elements in this area. Okay. And this is water, not air, so I don't get the free, the free yeah. raise. Yeah. So... You can't cover it with a free raise, so you're going to have to roll enough to cover the standard difficulty plus five more. And the standard difficulty is a 10, so um, let's give it a shot. See what that you get. That is not a 37. That was the dice not rolling properly. Yeah. 34. <laughs> Okay. Okay. <clears throat> nice. I am a really good wizard. You're you're an okay wizard. I'm a pretty good wizard. Um so divining the abilities of an object is among the simplest lessons a student of water learns in the temple. Uh if the spell is successfully cast on an object, you automatically learn all the powers and abilities the object possesses. It, it has no powers or abilities except that it is a spreader of taint. If carried on your, if anything of this is carried on your person for long enough, it will start to taint you. Um, 
is most frequently used to identify any supernatural qualities an item possesses. Paint. Um, so this is a cursed object for all intents and purposes. Uh, spell will also grant the caster knowledge of the item's origin. The item uh, was a person up until three days ago. Then it was sacrificed oh. to something not of this realm. Um, and technically the clan of the individual who has carried it the longest would be the Imperial clan. The Imperial families. So which leads you to believe that this must have been a servant of the city's daimyo. Someone in the court, at least. Would I... You're the kind of the arbiter of how much I get from this. Would that be enough to tell me the name of this person? Not at all. Okay. And... Um... The something similar at GM's discretion for additional plot stuff. Um, what would that be? What I just gave you. Okay. So, uh, um, would an additional piece of information be how to destroy it safely? Would that be within the scope of what I could get? Um, there, given how much you've dealt with Obsidian, you. You aren't sure how to, if you can destroy it safely. But as you're kind of wrapping everything up on your end, um, the doji finally gets control of the crab and is put down again. And you notice that the steps, the kind of tracks that you found of people uh, lead you to believe there were at least four involved in the ritual uh, that left north bound towards higher up the the kind of sloped land to where the waterfalls kind of start uh, but you've also noticed that the footprints start to just get to a point where they vanish uh, and instead of regular like human feet prints you find the kind of conical shapes of the spider legs that dig themselves into the ground as the creatures move. I but look they, back at the rest of the group they left and in realize... A hurry. <clears throat> yep. They left in a hurry? Mm-hmm. Could we... Fu Shit. I'm trying to figure out what they were... If they're still here, or what they were doing, it looks like they left the area. Yeah. But what were they doing here? <clears throat> they said they were digging. <clears throat> Is this where the uh, the Naga said they were digging? Mm -hmm. So we have no, to find. There's no symbols yeah. of anything being dug up. Yeah, that's right. That's weird. You know, I for a second I look at the waterfalls and I tilt my head a little bit. Does it look like there's anything behind those waterfalls? The first, the ones that are closest to you um, are maybe at the highest, like 8, 10 feet tall. Yeah. Um, doesn't look like there's anything behind them. But the ones further up the stream, the river, um, start to get larger, wider. Um, and you see that there's maybe two or three ledges where the waterfalls themselves are easily 20, 25, almost 30 feet tall. And definitely, definitely... They, they, they have something where the water, you can clearly see that the water comes down and it doesn't reflect the same anymore. 
So there has to be some kind of cavern. They said they were digging underneath the water. Mm-hmm. I start walking up in that direction. Okay. And I say it out loud. I might be wrong, but I think that is where we need to go. Okay. Wait a minute. I turn around. Hmm. We're missing a scorpion. The Asawa looks at you. He said that he was finishing up, that he'd be coming along. Should we go back for him? He has no idea which direction we went. Yet. I don't think we could wait. Well, I don't know if we could waste time. The Okoto and I will, will go back for him since we know where you're going. Agreed. I turn around and start walking toward the water fountain, the waterfalls. Okay. <clears throat> and as you start to make the climb up further up the river, and as the Isawa and the Okoto make their way back to the Soshi, I think this is a good spot to call it for tonight. I am... Uh I did have one thing I wanted to do real quick. What do you want, bro? Um, no! Something I should, something I I made the done, outro. Something I should have done two sessions ago. Oh. Um, Kill yourself? We could, we could do it. We could do it off board. Okay, no, what do, you want, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? Because um, some of the audience I, might want to see it. I realized I have that spell um, as of last, end of last session, and I never used it on the Wakasashi that I'm carrying instead of my clan one. Oh, it's in my belt. So mm. I wanted to use it. Okay, that that will be handled off screen because that that will okay. that will lead to some interesting story things that I think would be better off if nobody sees it. Perfect. Uh, <laughs> so uh, as always, I want to thank you both for being here. I know that Ray couldn't be here because of life, uh, but we miss you. And uh, oh, we didn't kill your character as much as I was tempted to do so. Uh, but uh, thank you both for being here. Thank you to the audience for joining us as well. Uh, I am so excited to be back to some L5R. Uh, I got uh, some Wild West last week, so I definitely need some samurai action. I hope you did too. Uh, one of the things that I want to start doing uh, since um, the outro is no longer just me being a talking head, uh, I want to open it up to any plugs that you have. I know that Pete, you were, you're one of the designers at, uh, paradigm gaming. If you want to plug anything that you guys have coming up. Uh, well, we, we put out an official announcement about the OGL kerfuffle. Um, oh, we will shit. be joining, we will be joining, uh, pathfinder. I mean, Paizo with the orc. Excellent. Um, yep. Nice. And, um, we kind of, well, Henry kind of released the news that something's up with Rotted Capes. Um, I'm working on the second edition for the game. Uh, that's pretty much it right now. Okay. Ben, you got anything to plug? Unless you happen to live in the Northeast and are looking for a goth night, I'll be DJing in uh, Manchester <laughs> on February 2nd. But other than that, no. Okay. I, I have nothing <clears throat> going on. Uh, all of the Depeche Mode. Um, but as always, uh, please take care of yourselves, uh, take care of each other. Uh, mental health is a serious topic here in the channel. Uh, it is okay to not be okay. And if you feel like you need help, uh, be aware that there are phone numbers going up in our Twitch chat. If you're watching live, they will be in the description box. If you're watching on YouTube later, um, take care of yourselves. You know, if you feel like you need to reach out, there are resources out there for you. You know, we got to experience a very dark period at the beginning of the pandemic. Um, I don't know if we're fully out, but I know that it is a lot lighter than it was before. Uh, but if you're still dealing with the shadows, if you're still dealing with your own darkness, uh, there are resources out there for you. If you're not in the United States, there's a link going up that also will be in the description box if you're watching on YouTube. Um, because, you know, you need to know that there are resources available. You're not alone in it. And, um, you know, no man is an island. Uh, no person is an island. So don't be afraid to ask for help. Uh, mental health tends to be uh, stigmatized or kept behind like a taboo subject matter. It, it's not. 
it's not you know it's part of our general health and everybody needs to know and i will repeat it to to my dying breath that it is okay to not be okay so please know that take that with you um <clears throat> as far as the schedule is concerned uh you can catch us on thursday with the seventh chronicle on the channel opening up with seventh c it's going to be a fantastic romp uh thursdays were supposed to be for dungeons and dragons and seventh c because they were both kind of piratey um because of the watsi kerfuffle jealous. Yeah, because of the Watsi kerfuffle, uh, I have dropped Dungeons and Dragons. I will not be picking them up again. Uh, I do have my Pathfinder books coming in, though, uh, so I might do that. And if worse comes to worse, uh, I announced this last night, but I'll, I'll reiterate it now. I am uh, deciding to, because of the giant that was Watsi now being um, being shot itself in the foot, I think it's a good time for creatives to kind of come out and push their own systems. So I will be publishing a novel and a system to go along with that world. Uh, so get ready for that. Uh, but uh, next week, Monday, you can catch our Anarch chapter of our Vampire the Masquerade. Um, if you're into vampire... Um, and if not, next Tuesday, we'll see you here for Werewolf the Wild West, you know? Rip-roaring, good times, gunshots, uh, liquor, and brothels. You know, what can go wrong? Uh, but please take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and we will see you when we see you. Please have a good night or rest of your day.